Good day, folks. I bring you greetings from the uh, Chetwin Gospel Tabernacle right here in Chetwin. I am Pastor George Rowe, and uh, it's, it's a real privilege to stand today and greet you and to share with you God's Word. These are difficult times, there's no doubt about it, and I don't have to tell you that. And we're all working together uh, to make lives just a little easier and a little more exciting. I want to zero in just a little bit today on, on the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. And, and there's no doubt that the world had gone astray. And, and men needed to be reconciled with God the Father because of what had happened in the Garden uh, of Eden. And so Jesus comes to the planet and uh, he's born in a manger. Um, he is God in the flesh. And so as he begins his ministry of reconciliation, Matthew tells us the story of where he travels throughout Galilee. It's a very specific mission that Jesus is on. And Amazingly, when you look at the scripture, Galilee is ready. Um, they're, they're ready for some good news. They're ready for the evangelists. They're ready for the Son of God. They are ready for the Son of Man. And so they have an open mind to the ministry that Jesus Christ is bringing. You see, good news is always a welcome thought. We celebrate when good news is announced. By golly, we've been listening to the news and our governments and our medical professionals, and every day we're calculating numbers, we're looking at new vaccines, and we're just hoping, and in many cases praying, that the day will come soon rather than later when the good news will be that the pandemic is past and we're back to some kind of normal living. That would be awesome, and I know we're going to welcome it with open arms and with receptive hearts and spirit. But we also need to understand, as difficult as it is, COVID-19 ought not to rob you and I of the joy that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many years before Jesus even came, uh, Nehemiah had announced to his people after they had been working on the Great Wall, he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so as I talk with you today, I want you to understand that the joy of the Lord does not necessarily have to be taken away from us and replaced with the anxiety of dealing with COVID-19. The world in the last year has gone through and will continue for a little while to go through difficult times. And so we really need to focus upon God. And in some cases, we really need to refocus because social media can very easily captivate our minds to the point where we stop focusing upon our real joy, which is found in God alone. In fact, on one occasion, God said through the prophet or through the psalmist way back in Psalm 46, this statement, be still and know that I am God. And he goes on to say, I will be exalted among the nations, bless the Lord, and I will be exalted in the earth. And so we take great comfort today that when we focus upon Jesus, the joy of the Lord will be with us and we can get through any difficulty or any challenge that you and I will face. So in Matthew 4, I want to read to you some verses 23 to 25, where Jesus begins the ministry. I read, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness that was among the people. Matthew continues, News about Jesus spread all over Syria, and the people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, 
those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, and the paralyzed, and those with seizures, and he healed them all. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed Jesus. And so from Galilee and throughout the rest of his life, Jesus enjoyed going to the synagogue. And the services at the synagogue were well organized. And for instance, when you go in and meet with the people, one section of the service that they would have would consist of prayers. These prayers would sometimes be repeated, sometimes they would sing them, sometimes they would hum a prayer, but prayer was an important part of the service held at the synagogue. Reading from the law, reading from the prophets, was another part of the service. And you can imagine Jesus being there and listening to what is happening and maybe on occasion waiting for an opportunity for him to speak. And then there was also an address or a sermon or a word of encouragement. Somebody from the congregation, a rabbi, somebody of some sound reputation, a distinguished teacher, would be asked sometimes to share, to just stand, share a word, a word of encouragement, talk about things, talk about stuff, just to get people thinking in the positive. Well, the Bible says Jesus did at least three things when he went from the synagogues, not just in Galilee, but as he, as he traveled throughout the area. The first thing he did, the Bible says he was teaching in their synagogues. There was a lot of confusion about God and always was in the nation of Israel. And, and Jesus wanted to put an end to guessing who God was or whether there was more than one God. He wanted people to stop trying to figure out who God is. And so throughout his ministry, he would teach about the Father. The Israelites in the past had worshipped many gods, and, and uh, Aaron, for instance, made this golden calf and took it out of the fire, and it became a part of their god for a short period of time. And the Bible says there is no other god but our god. In fact, Moses said to Pharaoh, there was no one like to the Lord our god. And if I go to Matthew chapter um, 23, we find that an expert of the law came up to Jesus and asked the question, what is the greatest commandment? It's a fair question. And Jesus responded this way. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. In order for you and I to love God with all of our heart and our mind and our soul, we have to believe who God is. And we have to know and feel within our heart there is but one God. And so throughout his ministry, Jesus would be teaching about God. Also, he would be preaching, and there's a little difference between teaching and preaching. He would be preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. Throughout the word, throughout the epistles and throughout the gospels, there is much emphasis put on the fact that man needs to be reconciled with God. And so Jesus, throughout his ministry, is preaching that God loves you. You need not feel alone. You need not be alone. You need not feel destitute or isolated. Even though we have all sinned, God loves us with an eternal love. And when Jesus would speak to people who were isolated, almost people who would be rejected totally by society in his preaching, he wanted to make it imperative 
that they understand God loves them. And eventually, this Jesus, who's doing the teaching and doing the preaching, is going to lay down his life for the world, for all humankind. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you know what? Today we need to return to the teaching and the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in the Word of God, there is hope. You've heard me say before that the Word of God is the heart of God written on paper. And so have hope today that God loves you. Amen. And the other thing that Jesus did was healing. This was a big part of his ministry. He would touch the lives of people and, and he would heal them. Just let me read again as a reminder of what I read earlier. News about Jesus spread all over Syria and people brought to him all who were at various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed and Jesus healed them. The marvelous thing about Jesus is that you didn't need to have an appointment. You didn't have to come to Jesus with offerings of money or present to Jesus some kind of a resume indicating that you are an important person and Jesus must needs go out of his way to heal you because of your social standing. No, none of that was required. The need was there and Christ came to meet the need. People came as they were and Jesus touched them. He spoke to them. He healed them. And when he spoke into their lives, when he healed their body, he was healing their mind and he gave them hope so that they could walk away from Jesus and feel that, yeah, man, life is good. And because Jesus touched me, I'm going to enjoy life. And not only that, but it's a reminder that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know what? The news about Jesus spread. He, he had such a magnetic personality that people were drawn to Jesus because there's good news. People are hearing the truth. Pilate stood before Jesus on one occasion and asked this question, but Jesus, what is truth? It's unfortunate that Pilate didn't hang around to find the answer that Jesus would have given. He just walked away. And Jesus on one occasion says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And you know, folks, Jesus has never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is where your needs are. Do you need to touch of Jesus today in any special way? Maybe just on our mind, protect our mind from all that's going on with this COVID thing. Or you may be going through family matters. You may be going through a sickness. Maybe some of you just lost your job. Maybe there are decisions you have to make that could change your life or that of your family. I want you to know today that Jesus Christ is still teaching, amen. He is still preaching. He is still healing, and He loves you with an abundance of love. My prayer is today that you will turn to God and refocus on Jesus. And so, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that those who are listening today, their hearts and their spirits will be uplifted, and they will keep repeating within their own spirit, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In your name we pray it, and we give you glory. Amen and amen. Bless you.